good. So 2024. And I'm going to share my screen with you. Here you go. My name is Claudio Oliveira Galon. Today is the 5th of February. And I'm originally from Brazil, and I have been teaching at LA HC since 2009. Uh, and I started teaching almost every year, and started and started teaching almost every year since uh, 2003 here in California, because before. For them, I was teaching elsewhere. I was teaching, I taught at Puerto Rico, University of Puerto Rico. And, but that's 14 years here, right? Here is 20 years. No, 21 years. 21 years. Here is 15 years. This course is the one I like the most to teach. It's a very interesting one. And, uh, I have a PhD degree in physics from the College of William and Mary, and I also have a second PhD degree, but this one in electrical engineering from Norfolk, from the Old Dominion University in Norfolk. This PhD degree here was in 1990. This one here in 1990. This one here is in 1996. Okay. So during my PhD degree there at uh, William Mary, we had a co-op program with NASA, and I was fortunate enough to, to do my PhD there at NASA. And the name of the NASA Center, there are several NASA centers through the, throughout the states, right? The name of the NASA Center is NASA Langley Research Center. Historically, it was the first headquarters of NASA. And unfortunately, and today, you know, it's one of the smallest NASA center that we have, even though it was the very first one. Now, in, in size-wise, now is uh, is smaller, smaller than most. So let me get someone here. Okay, Paul, Paul Zapata. That's good. Who's coming? We have seven students, and my expert. Okay, so what else do we have about NASA Langley? NASA Lang is located in Hampton, Virginia, nearby Williamsburg, nearby Norfolk. Norfolk has a huge naval base there. That region of Virginia is called the Hampton, the Hampton Roads too, is called the Tidewater region. So I was in Hampton from 1988 to 1996. It was in, it was there, right? Then the Tidewater region that the first American astronauts lived and worked during the Mercury program, okay? If you know about the space program, the history of the space, space program during the Mercury program. And my expertise is in optical fiber sensors. That was the, that was the type of technology that I worked during my PhD thesis there at NASA. It was NASA who introduced me to this, to this type of technology when I was working there. And, uh, you know, I started to work on this field after my PhD. NASA hired me and I kept on doing some experiments there. And even today I work in the same field where, which my PhD degree led to. Okay, people usually do their PhD and instead of continuing their work on their PhD, so they move on to something else. My, but in my case, I have been working in exactly the same field that I did my PhD all those years, since 1988, since 1988. Okay, today I have a, a very nice technology that I'm proud of. I pioneered a new type of optical fiber sensor that nobody believed it used to uh, it work it. And I call that side illuminated fiber optics, SIFO. If you want to check on that, if you want to know 
learn more about what I have, my technology, you can go to my website. You know, that's uh, www.sizesensors.tech and uh, sizesensorstech.com. That's the name of my business, Science and Sensors Technology. Let's see. Yeah, good. So that's the place. And I have, uh, you know, some pictures of my optical fiber sensors, how they are used. Okay, and, and so and many other links here and pictures. Okay. So if you want to know more, we'll spend some time there in my website looking at it. And if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to, to answer your questions about this technology. Um, and uh, now we have, let's see, we have eight students so far here. And now that everybody is here, let's make make an announcement, right? So right now, you know, right now we have uh, eleven students registered, registered. Okay. Today we have eight right now, and we need and we need four more or more to reach the magic number, to reach the magic number of 50, so the course doesn't get canceled. So the course does not get canceled. So if you can, if you know anybody else that needs to take physics seven, you know, encourage them, you know, if you know anybody, anybody, that needs to take physics seven. Encourage them to register, okay? And we will be here the rest of the semester teaching that. Okay, so, and uh, what else? Okay, every now and then, you know, uh, right now I am overseas, okay? The nice thing about teaching online is that you can be anywhere in the world. I'm going to put that right in here. And, but every now and then we have some power outage here. I am in Brazil right now. I'm originally from Brazil and right now I'm, I am in Brazil. I spent uh, 40, almost 37 years in the States and I decided to spend some time here now in Brazil. So every now and then we have a power outage in the page of, in the place of I'm teaching. It doesn't happen a lot, you know, just uh, last semester happened only once. I ended up uh, missing some of the class, but that, uh, but then when that happens, you know, uh, please, well, let's see, when that happens, please do not log out, okay? Do not, do not log out. Did I have a back, backup plan? I have a backup plan. So what's the backup plan? Okay, that might be, you might want to use that as well. And, and spelled out in my syllabus, okay? There is a device, there is a device called UPS that I learned recently about that. And this is a power supply. This is a, this is a backup power supply that kicks in. Whenever you, you're, you lose power, okay. So it's you know it has been really I'm really happy about this UPS device that I bought. You might want to consider having your own too, in case that you 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 have power outage there at your house too, okay. And this this UPS device of mine lasts uh, you know half an hour, depending how much power I'm. I'm taking away from it. Can be anywhere between half an hour to one hour, right? You can power keep on powering my modem, and if you can, you can even go in the internet to look at those UPS uh, power supply. Let's see, backup power backup, an interruptible power supply. That's what UPS stands for. Okay, those those. You know, those values that you see here is in Brazilian reals, okay? Brazilian currency. And it's not uh, it's not that expensive, okay? It's, uh, and it's really, 
something really good that uh, we should have for an emergency. And here, here's the uh, the 2,400 is the Brazilian Brazilian currency, right? 499 would be in dollars. 499 in this one right in here. It's just like a battery that you plug in in your outlet, and then you plug in your computer, your modem to this UPS device. If you have a brownout, if you have uh, no oscillation in the electricity, this device, the UPS device, is there to ensure that you're not disconnected neither from the internet and uh, neither it doesn't disconnect your computer either. It's, you know, it's on those amazing things, right? Better than that, only, only a generator, right? Better, you know, better than that, better than that, only a generator, a real generator. I'm thinking about installing one here. And the generators are not expensive compared to the to those UPS devices, right? So uninterruptible power supply, uh, uninterruptible power supply. Uninterruptible power supply, that's the name of the device. Okay. And so what I want to do, <laughs> I want to go through some introductions, okay? And uh, I want you to tell your name. I'm not going to call you one by one. Uh, major, any major, the major that you are planning to go for, right? And any hobbies that you have, anything unique about you that you'd like to share with us. Let's do that. Let's play this little game so you can get to know each other okay and let's see here i'm gonna get my roster right here today is the fifth okay and maybe this one should be let's see here 12 no it's not 12 one march march Fourth, yeah, March four. That's good. Okay, yeah, fourth, eleven, and so on. So let's start here with this one here. I can take it out. Yeah, I don't need that. Jacqueline, are you there, Jacqueline? Hello, Jacqueline. I can see that you are right here. And I'm gonna put a star here in your name, okay? So whenever you're back, uh, let me know. And I'm gonna go to the next one, Alexandra. Alexandra was the first one to arrive here today, right, Alexandra? Yeah. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Alexandra and um, my major is animal science and I'm looking to become a veterinarian with that. And then a hobby I have is I enjoy crocheting and reading. And something unique about me is I've been a ballerina since I was two years old. <laughs> you have been where? Uh, the, 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 the thing unique, I didn't quite get it. Um, I've been a ballerina since ah, two ballerina. years old. Ah, ballerina. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, ballerina. Okay, since two years old. Great. Oh, animal sciences, you want to go for veterinarian, right? Become a veterinarian. Okay. I like to put veterinarian. And we have one more student coming in. Sky. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Alexandra. And this one here, I don't want to wrap up the text. And now Sky just joined us. Can you hear us, Sky? Let's see. I guess Sky needs, okay, good. Okay, thank you, Sky. So he go. So we're introducing ourselves to Sky and I'm gonna put here, you know, how 
I would like you to share some information about you so you can get to know each other, right? Let's see where is the information here. No, not this one. 2024. Okay, this one here. Okay. So tell me your name, your major, any hobbies, and anything unique about you. Okay, just like we did the last semester, right? Uh, and I'm gonna put it like that here. One, two, three, four. Okay. Name, hobbies, a major, hobbies. Anything unique about you? Anything unique about you? Okay, so name, oh, this one goes here, right? The name's already here, so you don't need the name here. Let's take it out. Hobby. Hobby you have. And Unique about you. Uh, let's see. Okay, and uh, okay, so you like to introduce yourself, uh, Sky? You can turn on your mic. Hello, Sky. <laughs> Must be having some technical problems there. Let me go to the next one, right? Vanessa, Vanessa, are you there? Hi, everyone. I'm Vanessa. I um, uh, graduated from San Jose State uh, last year. I'm just taking some post back classes, but I'm hoping to go into medicine, medicine um, awesome. either a nurse practitioner or a physician. And um, I like to hike when I have time. Um, and I like to read. Uh, I can't think of anything unique. <laughs> You you said initially you you graduated from where from from where? Um, from San Jose State, um, in twenty 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 two actually. Uh -huh. And which, which what was the major at, at that time? Oh, uh, it was psychology minor in bio. Ah, my biology. But now you wanna go for for medicine, right? Yeah. Ah, that's good. Yeah, I have a I have a student that was that has managed to get into medicine and it's very tough. They're very tough to, to to get into medical school, right? Let's see here. Yeah, good. Thank you very much, uh, Vanessa. And let's see, let's see. Jacqueline, are you there? Going back here to Jacqueline. No, it looks it looks like she left. Okay, so And Vanessa, just okay. Next one is Habi, Habi or Habi, right? I don't see. Okay, our oh, Jacqueline is coming back. Good. I'll put her here. Star. Habi Han. Okay. No. One more. Ashley. Ashley, are you there? Okay, I'm going to see Ashley. Corina Jurado. Corina is here, right? Hello. Okay. Uh, my name is Corina. Uh, my major uh, was kinesiology. Kinesiology. Um, some hobbies is working out and playing tennis. And, and I don't have anything um, to say about what's unique. <laughs> okay, thank you. Playing tennis. And cool. Thank you very much. And let me put here. And, uh, sorry. Okay. Thank you, Sky. Um, 
Oh, okay. This guy here shared her 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 information, right? So let's see here. Sky and biology major. And uh, her hobby is reading. EMT license. EMT license stands for what? Uh, let's see, Sky. Anything related to electromagnetic? Let me take a look at the internet, right? What EMT stands for? EMT. Ah, emergency medical technician. Okay, okay. Wow, that's nice. Okay. I I once was invited, you know, for everybody, right? Uh, I have some interesting story to talk about here. I once was invited to participate in a Japanese program, in a com comedy program. Those guys, they came all the way down from Japan to, to California, right? Nearby, nearby Los Angeles. They rented this huge place, made a, you know, built a huge pool and... Uh, and at that place, you know, they, they, they were doing some stunts during this program and they hired me as a physicist because they want me to explain what they were doing. They were sliding a very long slide and they would be propelled at very large distance, would fall over a large uh, pool that they built on the spot, okay? And that, in that, uh, you know, during those recordings that they were they, they are doing that that I participated, I met a EMT woman too, and she was there to make sure that nobody would get hurt during those stunts, right? And this woman she was interesting. She she told me that she she was also working for that other movie Jackass, in which those guys do those crazy stunts and they get hurt pretty badly. And she was telling me the story, okay? She was there to make sure they don't get even more hurt. The one, one of the guys, they were make, making the, the recordings of the movie with a catheter in his kidney because of so much abuse that he endured doing all those crazy recordings. I never watched that movie, by, by the way. I never. They have several, several of them, right? And it's just crazy what those guys do to themselves, right? Just to, to get some money and... Uh, and do those those movies. Tom Cruise is, is, is a similar situation, right? He does the stunts but for himself, but it's nothing like what those guys from Jackass, they do. Though. Those guys from Jackass, they, they, they do that, something that are really danger, dangerous and they get hurt in the process. So did you do anything like that, uh, this guy? Do you, have you ever worked uh, in any of those crazy movies that you have to make sure that nobody's gonna get, uh, get hurt while they're doing their stunts? Okay, I'm waiting here for Sky. Oh, okay, you can answer later on in case you're having some problem there, Sky. Let's go for the next one. Oh, I haven't had an experience in that kind of setting. setting. Okay, good. Okay, but I thought it was a really interesting experience that she was telling me. Okay, she was, she was there to make sure nobody's gonna, gonna hurt, get hurt and if somebody got hurt, she should tend to, to, to the person, right? She would make sure that would get the proper attention. And next one here, actually it's not here. Let's see, Norberto. Norberto is here, right? Hello, Norberto. Yeah. How are you doing? Good. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, okay. so uh, my name is Norberto. Uh, my major is construction management. And uh, some hobbies I like are, I just like to play the guitar, go to the gym. Uh-huh. Okay, you said construction then, management, that's what it is? Yeah. Okay, so something like uh, civil engineering, right? Yeah, it's, it's a very similar. Uh -huh, very similar. Well, uh, okay, and, and what are the hobbies you said? Oh, I like to play the guitar. Uh, play the guitar, okay. Play the guitar. Yeah. Anything uh, unique about you that you want to share with us? Well, I guess since I was younger, I like to design and draw out like floor plans or houses, stuff like ah, that. Ah, okay. Floor plan design, yeah. Just like a, a, an architect or, or a civil engineer would do, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. Design, house, floors. 
etc. Okay, good, good. Thank you very much. And let's go for the next one, Vanessa. Vanessa, are you there? Uh, good morning. Good morning. So um, I graduated from UC Davis in 2022 with an animal science major. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking these supplemental classes, just like physics to apply to vet school. Okay. To apply for a, which school you said? School. Uh, you said that you are taking physics to apply for a, what school you said? A veterinarian school. A veterinarian school. Oh, okay. Vet. You said veterinarian. Okay. Just like the, oh, just like Alexandra, right? Okay. Yeah. Veterinarian. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Anything, uh, any hobbies or anything unique about you or you like to share? Um, I like to hike and I love to go out to brunch. Brunch as well? Yeah. In the morning, okay. I was at UC Davis, by the way, some long time ago. That's, that's nice. Thank you very much. And let's see, next one here is Yorgo. Yorgo, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Okay, I can so hear I'm, you. So I'm doing radiology as radiology. a major. Uh -huh. And I'm doing a major of a uh, chemotherapist. Okay. So is that uh, radiology and which which other one is that? And uh, the, the job I'm trying to do after, I'm, I'm trying to get masters as well. I'm going to be a chemotherapist. Uh, you said chemotherapist. Chemotherapist. Chemotherapist, okay. And chemotherapist is like the one that treats for cancer or? Yes. Yeah, yeah okay, yes. okay. Yeah, okay. And uh, a hobby of mine is bowling. Bowling? Okay. Anything unique about you you'd like to share? I guess anything unique about me is uh, I faced many times I've failed at a lot of stuff, but. Uh, I kept going in life and I'm still going in life when I'm still failing. So, I mean, I'm not giving up. Okay. I think that's something you need about me. Uh -huh. Okay. You never give up something like that, right? Never give up? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, just like that movie, right? The Galaxy Quest. I do not know if you, if you watch it. That. It's a very good movie. It's, uh, it, it, I haven't it, heard of it. I have heard of that. You've you got to watch it. It's really, you know, it's a comedy, but it's also that there's a beauty to that that movie, and one of their 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 motives are never give up, right? Never surrender, never give up, never surrender. And so, thank you very much, Yorgo. And where are you from, by the way, Yorgo? Uh, here, here in the valley. Uh, uh see see but your name seems to be from elsewhere. Yeah, right? my my family is from Lebanon. From where? My my family is from Lebanon. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And then Paul Sapata, this Paul here. Yes, I'm here. Uh, so my name is Paul Sapata. Um I graduated from CSUN in 2020. Uh, I'm currently taking classes to get into um, med school. Med school? Um, yeah. So, and then uh, hobbies of mine, I guess one would be that I love basketball. I love watching it and I love playing it. Uh, and I guess it, <clears throat> something unique about me is that uh, I, alongside with a couple friends we started an organization and we are starting and we created a diabetic health uh, visits for uh, patients at in Orange County oh that's nice so is it like a startup or it's more like a it's more so like we a work we're working we're working so we're wanting to be a non-profit this year but uh -huh. right now like we're working alongside with a less than that free clinic Oh. And uh, through there, we're seeking out patients who have diabetes and like we're offering them workshops on how to, how to better manage it. And then as well as like showing them like, you know, like diabetic friendly meals that they can get at like their local grocery store. Oh, OK, OK. 
And you, you said you graduated from CSUN, right? What, what's your major at CSUN? What was the major? Uh, I graduated uh, with a major in Chicano studies. Uh, Chicano studies, ah, okay. Okay, Chicano studies. But you want to go for medical school, right? You want to go? Yeah. You want to go for medical school. Okay, good, good. That's great. And we have, let's see, let's, let's go to Jacqueline now, right? Hi, Jacqueline, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Okay, we'd like to share some uh, information, your major, your hobbies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, hello, my name is Jacqueline. Um, my major is biology. And so my hobbies are uh, painting, drawing, and playing tennis. Uh, something unique about me is that I own four cats. Yeah, four cats. Okay. Yo, yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Very different, very different. That's good. And yeah, those, they're really cool, you know, those. Mm -hmm. And they, they are, you know, one cat to another one looks like they have completely different, uh, you know, ways of behaving. You know, I, I used to, to have cats too. And, and uh, it, it, it's really interesting how, you know, how they behave you know, and when you compare them with each other. It's, Really interesting. So you're a cat cat person, right? Yes, I am. Person. Okay. And proud of it. Just say that. <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of it. <laughs> that's great. And let's see, 228 right now. Let's go a little bit more. And I see that uh... and uh, don't forget if you know any colleagues of yours, okay, friends that would like to join, take this course. We need students, okay? Right now we have only nine show up today, but I have 11 registered. We need at least four to ensure that the class remains, remains alive, okay? And what I want to do now, I'm gonna start. So it has to be minimum 15. Yes, that's what they told me, okay? But but they, in certain instances, they let the course, uh, you know, go. And they, they you know, they, they leave the course alone and we we spend the rest of the semester. But ideally, you know, you should have 15 here in the, in the, in the class, okay? So if you know anybody, let, let me know. Let me know or encourage them to, to join the, the class. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to go through the syllabus and my canvas site is already alive there and you are going to see the syllabus as well uh, physics 7 general physics 2 spring 2024 right harbor college here's the college mission serves our diverse community serves our, our diverse community by providing access to associate and transfer degrees, certificates, economic and workforce development, and adult and non-credit instruction. We promote equity, diversity, and student success through academic programs and support services that ensure our students become productive member, members of a global society, okay? And my name already introduced to you. I am providing you with my email address, both the college and my personal email address. If you want to talk to me, uh, I'm checking my personal email address every time. Okay, I, always, every day, every hour. This one, I check every now and then. So if you have something uh, urgent, right, to, uh, that you need, just uh, use my personal email address. My office hours is going to be Monday from 12 noon to 105. Okay. And from 12 noon, Wednesday to 1245. It should be one o'clock here, not 105. There might be a problem. It might be a mistake here. Okay. And at the same Zoom link, the same Zoom link that we are using here. Okay. Office hours, the same Zoom link. Uh, uh, class schedule. Monday from 8.50, that's the lecture, to 12. Lab, Wednesday, 8.50 to 12 noon. So the office hours are just, you know, just after the class, okay? 
responsible policy, email communications, 48 hours response time during business days, during business days, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's the Zoom link, lecture and office hours. We are going to be used, using this book, Cutnell and Johnson, this is the 12th edition. The authors are those guys here, okay? So, but, but the book's called Cut, Cut Now and Johnson Physics. Those were the original authors for this book. And after they pass away or they can, they no longer want to keep on writing and updating the book, you know, they, they are taking away from the authorship, but the, the, the title, the book title is still keep their name, okay? Those are the actual current authors for this book. And nowadays, books are updated very frequently, okay? With, uh, yeah. with technology that's improving almost uh, every year, something new always come up in the market, right? People have to keep updated, have people updating their textbooks. So you're, you can purchase this book in the ebook access. At the last year it was $69. Homework access plus the the ebook in the at the Wiley platform Wiley Plus platform. So you can log into there, log in there. This is the link. Let's go there. Here you go. Wiley Plus service unavailable. Uh, strange. Let's try it. Check there if you can. Okay, Wiley Plus. So, so we need the textbook and we need to buy the, the code for this to do homeworks and stuff? Yes, that's right. The homework, uh, you know, you do the homework online and uh, and it has uh, ha has this cost, okay? The, ho the homework is uh, is part of, I'm, I'm going to cover more in, in more detail, okay? Here's the book, Physics, General Physics. Uh, the course is already up and running here, as well as the homework. All the homeworks are right in here. Okay. Well, will will the we... will, mm -hmm. Sorry, Professor. Will the homeworks be in that website, or will the homeworks be in Canvas, where I can see? No, no. The homework is going to be in the website. The homework is going to be in the, in the Wiley Plus. Okay. Is uh, it, we do the canvas is going to be just the exams, but the homework is is, is going to be right in here in the site. Okay, you have like one, two, three, four, five, ten homeworks, 11, 11 homeworks so far. Okay. Any more questions? Let's see. And in order for you to, let's go here. Okay. In order for you to access the course, you need to use this section ID, course section ID, which is also in Canvas. There's a flyer from, from Wiley Plus. Let's go there to Wiley Plus. Oh, not here. Let's see here. Canvas, right in here, yeah, course, physics, 242, okay, so welcome to physics, right, just a welcome, here's the syllabus, and that is the Wiley Plus flyer that uh, covers what you have to do, the step-by-step, -step, right? to start using the platform with this course ID, course section ID, okay? And homework, here you go. So here's the answer to your homework, okay? For the homework problems, you need access to Wiley Plus online software. Log into Wiley Plus using the link. And the course section, oh, wait a minute. Course section ID here, gotta update this one. Course section ID. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, I also have a lab manual. It's not a requirement, but if you want to learn a little bit more, I wrote this lab manual, especially for LA Harbor College students. And I'm very pr proud of this lab manual because it walks through the, the actual lab. Okay, and can be purchased by $9.99 there in Amazon.com. If you have if you have that service from Amazon.com that they charge you every every month, right? You get a free access to this to this lab manual of mine. Okay. And for this is a four unit course, three ten, three hours and ten minutes of lecture per week, and three hours and ten minutes of lab per week and then uh, because it's an online course i'm gonna put the lab between quotes okay that's the prerequisites for the course physics six the class recordings are in my youtube channel i have recordings for physics six there i have recordings for physics seven i have recordings for physics then, then the higher level courses as well is physics 38 Physics 37, Physics 38, and Physics 39, which is the calculus-based physics. This course is more like a, is the, is a trig-based course. We don't go into the into the derivations using calculus, okay? More advanced courses like 37, 38, and 39 uses calculus, integral and differential calculus. So I have all those recordings there as well in my YouTube channel. And right now I'm recording this class, right? And I will post it, this recording for you. And, but I want to, to show you, let's see here, I can find it. Okay, home, right? All the recordings for, the lecture and, video, and lab videos for 2023, you already have the links right in here, okay? And I'm gonna post the recordings for 2024 as well. I'm gonna post them. So if you want to take a look in advance before you attend the class, you can take a look right in here, okay? And the notes too, the notes for 2023 are here. Spring 2023. That's the first part of the notes. That's the second part of the notes. Okay. But I'll be posting the 2024 notes as well. This one that you see right in here, type typing. Okay. Going back to our syllabus. Course description. This is the second course in a two course. In a two course, trigonometry based sequence fee with physics six. Topics include the principles of electricity and magnetism, optics, which is my specialty. Optics is what I did for my PhD, right? Fiber optics specifically, and, and modern physics as well. Modern physics is an interesting part of physics. And the laboratory includes both quantitative and qualitative experiments, which permit students to verify, illustrate, and deduce various laws of physics. Okay, and student learning outcome. Upon successfully completing this course, you will achieve the following competences, cognition and communication, ability, in cognition, ability to solve problems related to general physics. The general physics too, right? Uh, professor, I was, check, I was checking your YouTube channel and there was two, which one is for our class? Are we gonna watch videos to learn? Okay, so did you did you click in the link that's in the? No, I, I just searched you up. It says it showed two channels, but there's one where you have sixty three subscribers and like many videos. But I yeah, wanted yeah. to know is that the mixed is that mixed classes or how do we find out which videos is for our course? Well, uh, all you do is to click in the link here, and you, it will take to, for instance. The first le lecture, okay? If you go straight to YouTube, you're going to see a bunch of videos of mine. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to find what you want to watch, right? So, so what do you do? You just go here to the Canvas page and click in the link. 
This would be the link for today's class, for instance. We cover this material in today's class, okay? And, and make things much easier for you, right? Instead of going through each of the videos, you want just to find, you know, instead, instead of finding the video, right, that that you want uh, to watch, you just go straight here to, the, to this link. Okay, make sense? Did I answer yes, Professor. Question? Yeah, you did. Yeah, so, so so let's click here so you have an idea, right? Here, don't forget, this is the recording of last year, the spring 2023, okay? And you're going to have a similar a similar link for today's class, 2024, okay? Do I want to? Uh, don't, don't, don't forget, this is no Avengers type of uh, video, okay? This is a very low quality type of video. Uh, the, the scripts I do on my fly, okay? Uh, and uh, you're not going to see any special effects there, but it would be very helpful if you want to, to review what was discussed in the class, okay? It's a, let's see, it's a two hour long video. No, this one is only 40 minutes. Okay, yeah, this, only, this one is only 40 minutes because it was the very first meeting, right? The first thing that we did last semester, the very first. Okay, and and that would be, you know, you know, what I taught in the first day of class in, in 2023. I display some of uh, what's some of the things that are shown in the in the book. Okay, and so on. Okay. So again, you know, if you want to take a look at the videos of last uh, year, the links are all here. And if you want to subscribe to my channel too, it's nice too, okay? You don't have to, but... Uh, okay, going back here to the... Summary of links. Okay, this link you already know. You already have it. Links for the lecture, lab, and office hours, and the exams as well. Okay. You have the link for the Wiley Plus already. The lab manual link in Amazon.com. The class recordings. Okay. You, you're not going to use this link. You are going to use the links that I, that I provide there in Canvas. And then there will be another link which is going to be your lab group folder that I will provide to each, each group, each lab group separately. Grades are based on lecture and lab attendance, lab reports, homework, partial exams, and final exams. For lecture attendance, I give you a little bit of a grade here if you attend everything. And we're going to discuss that. Attendance is required during all labs. Okay, what we do during the labs is something unique that you're not going to find it anywhere. Uh, although, but attendance is not required for the lecture, although it will help with your grade. If you attend 100% of the lectures, you are going to be able to get 5%. Uh, it's going to help you on your final grade by 5%. The student will man, the student the instructor will maintain an attendance record. Homework. Homework is done online using Wiley Plus platform. It's a computer software that allows you to solve problems, providing with automated hints and grades. The homework accounts for 10% of the final grade. So subscribing to Wiley Plus is a requirement for the homework. Uh, partial exams. So here you go, attendance, right? Homework, right here. Partial exams are here. Lab is gonna be at the end. There will be three partial exams during the semester, each of them two hours long. You should expect one partial exam every five weeks. I'll drop the lowest grade of these exams. You take three exams, drop the lowest grade, the two remaining grades, I take the average of the two remaining grades, two highest grades. And the two highest grades of the partial exam accounts for 
Our partial exams and the final exam will be taken online in Canvas. Okay, the partial exam and, and the final is going to be online, and we usually do that on Wednesday, 8.50 to 10.50. Please advise me if you are a special student and need, uh, and need additional time. Final exam includes all material covered and accounts for 24% of the final grade. Failure to take the final exam will result in an F for the course. Make sure you, you're going to be there to take the exam, okay? Please consult the final examination schedule of, uh, schedule of classes for the date of this exam. It's the college who published, who published uh, the date of the final exams. And you can go right in here, the site LAHC, right? Academics. Mm -hmm. Calendar schedules and catalogs, right in here. This is the schedule of classes for the winter. This is the schedule of classes for the spring 2024. So if you open it here, we have the schedule of classes, but also we have the schedule of the fi final exams. Let's see, they have here final, and yeah, it's not listed, but it's at the beginning of the catalog here, spring 2024 academic calendar, final exam is scheduled, see that? So the final exam is gonna be between May 28th and June 3rd, and here in the horizontal row, in this row, we have the days of the class meetings, okay? And here we have the times. And what you have here is the day and hour of the final exam. That's how they put together this table, okay? And they have they even have a an example, right? In our case, we're meeting Monday and Wednesdays, right? See Tuesday and Thursday, Monday only, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay, so we are right in here in this column, and then we have to look at the meeting times. Our classes start at 8.50, so it's going to be this cell right in here. So our final is May 29, between 10 a.m. Don't forget, it's 10 a.m., right? The partial exam is at 8.50, but the final exam is at, is at 10 a.m. Watch out for that. Any questions so far? May 29, 24, between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. The final exam will also be online using Canvas. Before the final, make sure you consult the schedule posted online. Just what, just exactly what we just did. At the day of any exam, it's 2.50 right now. I like to take a break every hour, okay? So you don't get burned out. Okay, so let's go a little bit more, right? Uh, maybe until three o'clock. We started at Oh, oh, I'm sorry, not at 3 o'clock, sorry. Let me adjust my time here. Mountain time, Pacific. It's 9.50 right now, 9.50 in California, right? We start at 8.50. Okay, at the day of any exam, our exam will be on Canvas. You must be logged into Canvas and the class Zoom link. Okay, simultaneously with your webcam on. And the class Zoom link, I'm gonna put like that. With your webcam only, one, two, three. And I'm going to center, justify Zoom link with your webcam on. For our exam, you must have a reliable computer, reliable internet connection and a working webcam. It must be left turned on all the time. I need to see you while you're taking the exam. Webcam is a requirement for this course. If you don't have a webcam in your computer, you may use the webcam of your cell phone 
while logged into Canvas from a computer, right? From, no, that doesn't have to be your, yours, but a computer that's available for you. I've arrived before the exam starts or you'll not be allowed to take it. Exams are open note, open book, but you cannot get outside help from anybody, okay? Online lab activities due to the nature of this online course, there will be no hands-on experiment, unfortunately. You know, that the fun part of this course is the experiments, are the experiments. Instead, the instructor will provide you with actual data obtained from previous experiments related to the course by other students. And you will work with this data to display it in proper, in a pro, in proper table format, plot graphs, et cetera, using Microsoft Excel. You're going to learn Microsoft Excel. Okay, and that's uh, one, one of the questions I would like to make, uh, to, to ask you if you have experiences with Microsoft Excel, right? Uh, I'll ask you next time on Wednesday. And it's, it's not difficult to learn Microsoft Excel. It's very useful. It's very useful, extremely useful. I use Microsoft Excel to do my own research. I discover, you know, I, I once had a project, had an ongoing project, and uh, I programmed Microsoft Excel to do something that nobody has ever done, has ever done, and I discovered something new, All right? So it's a very powerful tool. Microsoft Excel is a very powerful tool. Do not underestimate Microsoft Excel. Okay, online, online lab activities. And laboratory work is an important component of any science. For this reason, we design a series of eight to 10 experiments for this course to reinforce the concepts presented during the lectures, demonstrating practice the concepts taught, familiarizing students with various types of equipment available for engineering and research purposes, demonstrate lab procedures and methods of data analysis. That's how you're going to be using Excel, okay? Microsoft Excel, right? MS Excel. Learn techniques to troubleshoot an experiment and your data. Experiment, your data among, and your data, and your data among others. In all experiments, we, which I call make-believe experiments, you'll be working with no more than three classmates. You can choose your classmates. However, the instructor has the right to change the members of your group, okay? And so let's take our break right now. And let me take here my notes, go to my notes. Here's my notes. Okay. So we are going to have our 15 minute break and it's gonna go to 10, 10 a.m. Any questions before you go to the break? Okay, break from break from nine fifty five a.m. to ten ten a.m. fifteen minutes. If you do not have any questions, so I will I will see you in fifteen minutes. If you don't, or um, not. So Vanessa asked whether, whether what happens if you don't score well in the homework, right? Would that affect our grade dramatically? It's only 10%, okay, Vanessa? And, uh, and what uh, I usually do, I, you know, I usually, how to say, I curve the grades, okay, at the end of the semester. That's what I usually do. Okay, and that, that, that helps a lot of students. And let's see here, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I see you in 15 minutes, nine, uh, 10, 10.
Do recording again. And so let's start, let's continue here. Materials for the lab, lab manual, physics lab manual, uh, not required, but recommended, bound notebook to take notes, reliable laptop or desktop with Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Word for their analysis and for writing your lab reports, reliable internet connection, pen flash drive access to the cloud to store data, in the case of a power outage, I recommend you purchase a UPS unit and connect your computer monitor and modem to this unit. A UPS unit is a smart battery that provides power to your computer for a limited amount of time whenever you don't have electricity. Even though it provides a limited amount of time, when the light goes off, it doesn't take too long to, to come back, right? Sometimes it's just like a little brownout of, you know, you have a instantaneous drop in the voltage. And when something like that happens, your computer completely turns off, right? And it's not good. And even you, your internet access as well, your modem, you lose access to your modem and your modem has to restart all over again, okay? So the UPS unit allows you to keep power reliably, even when you have those sudden variations in, in the voltage in the electricity, a reliable lap laptop, you go. Your lab report consists of two parts. Okay, uh, let's start with the spreadsheet part. And you're going to understand better that I will give you a sample of a, you go, a spreadsheet that I will provide to you. It's in Excel format and a hard copy with the following word format. And I call it hard copy because between quotes, because nobody will print the document, okay? I call it hard copy to distinguish from the spreadsheet. Your data is here, a spreadsheet with your data, with your data and graphs, huh? with your original data and graphs. A hard copy, puts a file in Word format. <clears throat> It's hard copy between quotes because nobody will print the document. Instead, you will upload your electronic file to your group folder. That's in. Spreadsheet provided by your instructor. Each group will submit a single lab report. Word plus the, let's see, the, the word, uh, single lab report, uh, the Excel document, lab report con consisting of two documents, right? Consisting of two documents, the Excel document, which is the spreadsheet of the actual data, which is, which is, oh, okay, the Excel document, which is the spreadsheet with your actual data. Okay. And the Word document. Or hard copy, or hard copy. The spreadsheet contains the data and the results required to plot the graphs. If any, if any, any graphs of the virtual experiment, the word file is a document in the proper sense of a report. These two documents must be turned in the date announced by the instructor, usually before the beginning of the next experiment or the next lab, not experiment, but the next lab. The instructor will provide you with Excel spreadsheet with your data. The spreadsheet will be placed in the group folder that has already been, that, that will be created. That is created, that is created by the instructor. All group members must contribute to the prepar preparation of the lab report to ensure the contribution of every member. Advise 
Although it's not a requirement that each group draft a simple agreement in writing, committing each of their members to contribute to the write-up of the final report. This agreement should specify the contribution of each group member. Okay, your lab report is worth 100 points and your grade will be based on the following. Every measurement must be reported in the SI units. Okay, meter, kilogram, second, Kelvin, Coulomb, Mol, and Candela. This one doesn't apply because we're doing an online course. The correct number of significant figures, more on that during our meetings. For each missing significant figure, I will have subtract 0.2 to 1 point from your lab report. On the other hand, for each significant figure that's added incorrectly, I will subtract 0.1 to 0.5 from your grade. The exact number of points to subtract will depend on the lab report. Use of proper units in the report, proper format, and neatness, completeness, and accuracy, reporting of proper statistical results. There are, those are all types of uh, statistical results that we have. Average, standard deviation, percentage difference, standard deviation from the mean, regression curve, determination coefficient, correlation coefficient. You're going to, you know, you're going to learn all about that. For each incorrect value, also be tracked anywhere between one to five points. Graphs. Okay, I will. If you never plotted graphs with Excel, I will teach you how to do that. It must be clean and plan to optimize the space. It's a space, no large blank, blank areas in the graph. I will determine the grade of your graph with respect to the percent of the area in your plot. If you use only 10% of the total area of the graph, you get only 10% of the point allocated for the graph. Or if you plan your graph in such a way that you use almost 100% of its area, you will get the full allocated points. You must label the axis for the graph with the proper quantities, okay, and their corresponding units. Ensure the numbers along the axis are properly spaced and not encroached on each other. And I'm gonna give an example of what I mean about that. And well, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna skip this one because we, we are going to delve into that in detail on Wednesday, okay? Uh, but you have to know that at, at attendance and participation on the online lab session accounts for 20% of your lab grade. Just by showing up, you're getting 20% of the lab grade, okay? Just by showing up in the, if, even if you don't turn in the report, you still get 20%. And remaining 80% comes from the correction of your lab report. Consequently, if you are present during the online meeting but fail to turn in a report, your group, if your group, right, fail to turn in a report, your grade will is going to be 20%. However, if you fail to attend an online meeting, your grade will be zero for that specific meeting. Okay. Uh, let's see, lab report format. I'm going to discuss in more details on Wednesday. Makeup, lab, and exam policy. There are no makeup labs and exams. If a school function or religious holiday conflicts, or a school function conflict, right, with uh, an examination date, please notify me at least one week in advance. So he, so I may reschedule the exam for the whole class. It's the student responsibility to advise the instructor one week in advance of any school function or religious holiday. Okay, academic and scientific misconduct. What what we have here, we have basically we have plagiarism, okay, and data manufacturing. Believe it or not, this thing happens in the real world, in the professional world. University professors, some, you know, a few, very few university professors do that. Researchers do that. I have witnessed things like that. Plagiarism, you already know what it is, copying from somebody else or uh, or, you know, claim that you discover something when in reality someone else discovered. So that's part of plagiarism. No attribution to whoever did work. And data manufacturing is the worst of all types of misconduct. You're not going to manufacture data here because I'm providing you with the data. Okay, so, but here is, is uh, 
the important one that we have to concentrate. During the lab activities, you're supposed to generate, uh, not to generate, uh, this one applies only to the actual, you're supposed to work, right? With your own data, with the data, with the data, with the data that's provided to your group. You're supposed to work with your group members, supposed to work with your group members, with the data provided to your group and report, report it accordingly. You must not copy or plagiarize data from other, uh, data from other groups, nor manufacture data into your report, okay? For more on academic integrity and plagiarism, quote some articles published on the internet. The strict academic in dishonesty policy, board policy 5500, violations of academic integrity include, but are not limited to, the following actions cheating on exam, plagiarism, working together on assignment that was supposed to be done independently. That's the case of your exams. Okay, in your exams, you're supposed to work independently. You can use your notes, okay, but you have to work independently. Paper or project when the instructor has specifically stated students should not do so. Submit the same term paper to more than one instructor or allowing another individual to assume one's identity for the purpose of enhancing one's grade. Disability accommodation statement. I have uh, spelled that out here. You can take a look at that. And Title IX. Protect students and staff alike from discrimination based on sex, including sexual harassment and sexual assault. Okay, you can look at the that, and uh, we have a reference here. Class conduct during the lecture, please turn off your microphone if you're not using it. Great. What number of points accumulated will determine your final grade in the course? The scale to the right will be adopted. And you are between 90 to 100 is an A, 80 to 90 is a B, 60 to almost 80 is a C, 79.99, right? D and F, okay? And here is the schedule. Okay, here's the schedule that we have. We start with chapter 18. Let's see, we have a student here. Uh, what's the class average for this course? What's the class average for this course? Uh, you mean the, the final grade? They are talking about the final grade, Vanessa? Yeah, okay. Well, we usually, we have a guideline, a, a kind of loose guideline that a 30% A's, 30% B's, and 40% C's, C's, D's, and F's, okay? That's a loose guideline, but it can be more than that for A's and B's, okay? Yeah. That's the loose uh, guideline that we have from, from the department, okay? But uh, if you need any grade, grade, just come talk to me and uh, I'll do, you know, and let's see, let's see what I can do for you. And, uh, you know, to reach, and oftentimes to reach this, this you know, like I mentioned before, uh, I usually, so sometimes it's necessary for me to curve the grade, right? To reach the percentage. I, I, I do that too. I do that too. And he go. Right now, the first exam is scheduled for March 6th. Roughly one month on week five. Let's see, we have a holiday. We have a hall in the third week. It's going to be on Monday, President's Day. Okay, and we have a spring break here on April, first week of April. Oh, and I have another holiday here. I gotta, you go. I like to bold face the holidays. We have three holidays, right? Total of two weeks of holiday. One week here for the spring break. Another uh, half a week here and another half week, two weeks of, of holidays, the total 
So instead of 17 weeks of activities, right? We, we have 15 weeks if you subtract the holidays, which makes sense, right? Okay, any questions? Did I answer your question, Vanessa? Yeah, okay, thank you. And let's take a look at the book that's online. See here. Not this one. Must be this one here. Okay. So, so we already have homework one, two, and three available. One, two, three. Yeah, and I have to reschedule those other ones here. Okay, so you can start working if you already know. And let's take a look. Wiley course resources. Professor, when are they due? That uh, you, you know, I, I'm a little bit loose with the with the homework. The homework is, you know, you have until the end of the course to to work on them. But ideally, you should be working, you know, on the homework and finishing the homework before the the the, first, the, the, the exam that's related to that homework. Okay, so. So if you go here, let's see, I'm putting here the due date on 1st of June. See, I'm going to put the due date on 1st of June for all of them. Okay. And lunch. Okay, it's loading. Here you go, chapter 17. I'm going to start on chapter 18. 10 30 now, chapter 18, right in here. Athletic forces and feuds. Okay. And what, what we're going to do here in this course is, is the very basic type of information that you need to understand what comes afterwards, okay? And let me go here to my notes, 2024, right in here. Oh, by the way, between now and Wednesday, you know, start thinking who you would like to be in your lab group. Okay, so, If you already know someone that you know that you work well with them, anyone, right, that you work well with them, just uh, let me know. I'll, you know, I'll be working in this group with this, with those students, because we have a small class. You know, uh, no more than three students per group. You and two more, right? You and two more. Wait, you're talking about the lab homework, right? Yeah, for the lab. For the lab. Lab group, see that? I'm sharing and the screen, right? Do they do they do they each do they each turn individually or is one paper yeah. for the group? No, it's group. It's a it's just one report per group. One report per group. Uh let's see, I I wrote that down here. Lab, lab report. Let's see, Do -do -do -do. each group, lab report, laboratory report. Let's see, Let's see. Let's see. I wrote it somewhere here. Let's see, group. Each group submit a single lab report. Okay. Submit a single lab uh, report and now. And let me put that 23, right? That's going to be 24 as well. Copyright notes. See. During my courses, I've always generated copyrighted material. 
always something that you know might be very similar to what you had before, but I always add some stuff in there. Okay, so if you took physics six with me, okay, you already know some things that uh, I introduce you at the beginning of the course. If you didn't take physics six with me, you will be introduced to that right now. Okay. And there are there's a very nice way of organizing physics. There's a very nice way of organizing physics and uh, understand what where everything else comes from. Okay. Physics is organized based on three different ideas, three core ideas. Those are the three core ideas. All those years that we have been studying the universe, trying to make sense of the universe, we, you know, the human race, we start to formulate concepts, ideas to explain the universe. And uh, we came up with these three basic ideas, the basic quantities, the primary definitions, and the laws of physics. At this point in time, you already know several laws of physics, right? But in the basic quantities, you already, we are, you know, we grow, we grow up, we grew up, we grew up with many of those basic quantities. And the primary definitions, I'm going to tell you, there are only two. Here there are seven laws of physics, you know, I never count them, but there is a bunch of them. So let's take a look at the basic quantities first. Like I said, we all grow up with those ba basic quantities. We take them for granted. It becomes like second nature talking about them. One of the basic quantities is, is the quantity, is the basic quantity that we call lengths. Okay. And uh, and this basic quantity is measured in meters. That's the unit in the SI system of unit. Okay. So when we're growing up, you already think of we are a little kid. We are taught into this concept, into this idea. Think about that when you were first, you know, when we were first. Uh, Defining those quantities, maybe for cavemen, this basic quantity of length was not as obvious as it is today for us. For the very first hominids, this quantity, this basic quantity of length was not as obvious as it is for us right now, right? And then there's another basic quantity that we use in physics as well, that we call it time. It is measured in seconds, okay? Well, the concept of lengths must have appeared when people start building houses, right? Left the cave or even walking a given distance. Ancient men had to walk a long distance to go after game, to hunt the prey and uh, how they would communicate the place where they would find their games, right? They would maybe, they would say, you know, X steps, you know? Or maybe if you live in the morning, wait until the sun is 45, is a little bit this high in the sky, right? And then you're gonna get to the place where the game is. But then in this case, you're not measuring lengths. Now you're communicating the length in terms of time, okay? And then there is this other important basic quantity that we are all familiar with. Again, you know, your second, second nature, becomes second nature to us, is the mass. Mass is quantity 
and be the finest quantity of, uh, I don't have it here, quantity of uh, matter, yeah? Quantity of matter a given object has. It's measured in kilograms in the SI system of units, units. One, two, three, all those three are from mechanics. All those three are from mechanics. And then we have this other idea that's not as obvious, but had been taking a long time for men to come up with this idea, is the idea of temperature, how hot, how cold. That's something that we see in thermodynamics. The unit of temperature is the Kelvin and abbreviated by the letter K. Here, kilograms, kilogram. Hmm. One, two, three, four, we need three more. What comes next, you know? Amount of a substance that we learn for the first time, we learned that in chemistry, right? It's the mole. One, two, three, four, five. We have two more to go. The next one is the one that we are going to be using in this course in electricity and magnetism. It's called the electric charge. Everything that you see here is kind of the microscopic world, right? And there is one more. There is one more that so far we have six, right? Electric charge. The unit of electric charge is the Coulomb. That's what quantifies the electric charge. And finally, the last one. The last one, you are not going to delve into it. It's luminous intensity and the unit of luminous intensity is the candle. Okay. Candela. Not candle, the candela. It comes from candle. Have you thought about that? So you can look uh, at the stars out there. Some stars uh, have a higher luminous intensity than others, right? Are brighter than the others. We know that the sun is brighter than the moon. The moon is brighter than all the stars in the sky. And all this luminous intensity can be quantified in terms of the candela, of the unit of candela, which comes from the candle. Why the candle? Well, because we use the candle as a standard of measurement of luminous intensity. I'm going to write it down here for you, okay? In the past, a candle was used as a standard of luminous intensity. Today we have something better than that. That's why we, and today we don't use the candle anymore. No, we don't use the candle object, right? Anymore to, as a standard of luminosity. So what you have to remember is this one. That's the new one. Luminous intensity, we're not gonna get into that. Unfortunately, we don't uh, deal with luminous intensity in any of our course here, even though we should have done that. Okay, here's the mechanics. Mechanics. Here's the mechanics. Here's the mechanics. Uh, I'm gonna take out this kilogram, otherwise you learn that in mechanics. You wanna take out of uh, parentheses. Mechanics, here too, mechanics. Here we learn that in thermodynamics term. 
thermod thermodynamics. Here is also part of thermodynamics. I'm going to take the K out of parentheses. Here is ENM. By ENM, we mean electricity and magnetism. And here it was supposed to be on optics, but we don't cover that. So we'll be using this idea for the whole semester, for the rest of the semester. The idea of electric charge. Okay. And that's invisible. That's part of the invisible universe. That's part of the invisible universe. And I would say that's part of the invisible universe as well. Think about that, how difficult it must have been for man to come up with those definitions, right? Or not just come up with those definitions, but to come up with definitions that are, were independent of each other. Which other ideas must have, the, must have been advanced at the time before we came to those, all those seven quantities, okay? We can write that down in the, in the following way. All oh, these seven basic quantities are considered to be independent of each other when they were created when they were created, right? All this when these when these seven basic quantities were created, comma. They were considered to be independent of each other. Today we know that they are not independent of each other, but it's still a good uh, a good way of understanding physics. Okay. However, you know, when Einstein came along, and we're going to talk about his contributions, when Einstein came along, he discovered all the rise. I think one of those guys that uh, come up with ideas so crazy, but so crazy that we have to reformulate everything that we did. Everything that was done in physics until the early 1900s had to be reformulated all over again, even those basic quantities. When I'm telling you that those seven basic quantities that are independent of each other, I'm not telling you the truth, okay? But it's, it's good enough for the sake of the discourse. It's not true that they're independent of each other, but it's good enough for the sake of this course. Of this course. They, were, they were considered to be independent of each other. He discovered otherwise. Even though It's still, no? even though you, you, you still can, here you go. You still can think, can think about these quantities to be independent of each other. Dependent of each other for the sake of this course, okay? for the sake of this course, and I'm going to both face it and italicize. And the new kid in this block is this one right here. This is the new kid in the block. Primary definition. Okay, position. Okay, which uh, we denote by the letter X from the X axis. Okay. And that is also, I know the position vector R. Okay, position vector R. And I tell my students, okay, Let's see, I'm gonna get right here. 
equation. Oh gosh, light went out here. My light went out here. Did you notice that I still online? That's because of my UPS device. Okay, here you go. One more student coming in. Let's see who is that. Let's hope that the light come back soon. Sky, sky. Okay. In Brazil, we have thunderstorms. And during this time of the year, we have thunderstorms every afternoon. Okay, we're in January. It's summer right here. The unit of position is the meter. Okay, position is not the same as length, okay? Position is different of lengths. They are measured in the same with the same unit, but but they are different concepts. And you need there are two primary definitions. The other one is the force. And we denote the force by the vector R. Oh, force, Newton, right? Newton, that's the unit of force. We need those basic quantities to understand physics. We need those two primary definitions. Those are our starting points. Big thunderstorm out there. I still, we still don't have any electricity here right now. Let's go on for another half an hour. Okay, if, uh, let's see, I'm gonna put it here. If in 20 minutes electricity doesn't return, I will have to shut down my computer, but we still can stay online talking through my cell phone. Here you go. Laws of physics, then we have the laws of physics. First, Newton's law. First, second, first, second, and third, Newton's law. Laws plus Universal gravitation, gravitation law. Those are the laws of mechanics. Okay. Let's squeeze it, this guy a little bit. Yeah. Then we have four laws of thermodynamics. Okay, let's write that down. Let's save the space here. Three laws of motion. Whoa. Four laws of thermodynamics. Any other law? And then we have the four laws of ENM. Those are you going to learn. And I'm going to separate. Oh. Like that. That's what we're going to learn in this course. There are others too, you know. There is a law of relativity, two laws of relativity that Einstein formulated. We want to learn about those two. And if you have time, there might be another law there, quantum mechanics, that we, we might be able to cover. So start.
counting the loss here. Four, um, four, eight, here's eight loss. Eight loss that you must have by heart. And there will be six more laws that you have to learn. Then 50. Okay, so. So now we're going to talk about the electric charge and what it is. Okay. Let us, let's see, 10, 50 right now. Let's go another four minutes. Yeah, let's do it this way like that. Okay, so what is this thing about the electric charge, right? That's so important. We need to start somewhere to understand the, to understand the universe. We need to start somewhere, right? So, so we end up creating all those concepts, those quantities, these definitions. I call them primary definitions. And then we have the laws of physics. That's the way we, we figure out how to explain the universe. And now what you have to do, you have to understand. You have to have an idea what this electric charge is all about. Okay. What is the electric charge, right? Last time we talked about the five basic points. Now we will talk about the electric charge and what it is. Electric charge is a very abstract concept. More abstract than mass. More abstract than mass because a mass, you can have a feeling of uh, how much material I given object has, right, just by handling it. If it's very difficult to lift a given object compared to another one, it means that one object has more mass than the other one. Okay? That's easy. That's easier to quantify. But the electric charge is something a little bit more difficult, right? Electric charge is related to the phenomenon we all experience when during very dry days, right? We feel uh, a tick, right? When we hold some metallic object, everybody has experienced that, right? I, I, I didn't experience that until I was 20 something years old. You know, it was 1985 when I first had this experience of electric charge. I always grew up in a very humid country. And uh, here in Brazil, we don't have this experience that we have in the States, where the weather can be very dry and we become electrically charged. Okay? The phenomenon of electric charge is, is, is more easily observed. Phenomenon, phenomenon of electric charge is more easily observed in places with dry weather in the desert. You know, think about the Middle East. Think about the Middle East. You know, where Iraq is, right? Where the first civilization we hold on the surface of the earth. Uh, think about the Middle East, especially 
where Iraq is located today. It was in that region, it was in that region where the first civilization took hold, the Sumerians. In the desert, they would observe, they would experience this phenomenon of electric charge very frequently, okay? Very frequently. And uh, so the electric phenomenon has been around since the 2600 BC, I would say even more than that. But uh, it was during ancient Greece that it started to be steady in a more formal fashion. Ancient Greeks discovered that if they rub it, a rod, and we can do that in the, in the lab, made of umber against a cat fur, and approach it, the umber to light objects like feather, this object would be either attracted or repelled, okay? So we have this illustration here in the book. Here you go, here's the hair of this girl. You know, the hair of this girl is electrically charged and they're repelling each other, okay? And the, the electric shock is the zapping that you feel whenever you're electrically charged. So this type of phenomenon is attributed to electric charges. Okay, this type of phenomenon here is attributed to a property of matter that we call electric charge. Okay, so this force of attraction and repulsion that is observed in nature is attributed is attri attributed to the existence of electric charges. Okay? And what you have to know about electric charges? It's very easy. You have to know the following. You have to know that there are three types of electric charges. Uh, you know, they will say two, you know, but let's say it's three, positive, negative, and neutral. We learned that in chemistry as well. An example of a positive charge is what we call a proton. The proton particle, okay? And an example of negative charge is the electron. And an example of a neutral charge is the neutron. They all make they all make up all these three particles, all these three particles, proton, electron, and neutron makes up the atom. Okay, so let's see. I'm, I'm still without electricity here. Okay, don't go away. Okay, if I lose my connection here. Uh, because we can continue in my cell phone. My cell phone will, will have, we still have access to the internet. And let's save stuff here. What time is that? 10.59. Well, I guess it's time for us to have a break. Break and uh, from 11 a.m. to 11.15 a.m. Let's hope the, le the electricity comes back. As you can see, you know, it's very dark here in my place. We are having a thunderstorm there. It's really pouring outside, the light went out, but I'm still talking to you because I have this UPS device here that lasts at most 30 minutes. So if I run out of juice here in my UPS device, we can continue in my cell phone. So don't go away, okay? Uh, as you know, you know, there's no electricity, right? There is no electricity. And if I get disconnected, get disconnected. Don't go away. 
don't go away because you can still talk through my cell phone, okay? Okay, so let's have our break right now and I'll save it here. Stop recording and I'll see you hopefully in 15 minutes if I don't run out of, of juice here in my, my battery, my UPS device, okay? See you in 15 minutes. Hello folks, I'm back here. So I have some good news. During the break, the electricity came back and there's no way I'm gonna get disconnected, at least now, right? At least for now. So, but, uh, but now you see how, how good it is to have one of those devices, right? If I didn't have any of those backup devices, those backup electricity devices, my UPS, uninterrupted powers, an uninterruptible power supply, I would have been disconnected from the internet and you should still be waiting for me to log in back, right? Right? So, you know, electricity went out for 20 minutes and then it came back. I still managed to stay connected here. And, and, and believe it or not, that's something that, that I discovered a year ago. I didn't know it existed. It's, uh, you know, dumb me, right? How come I didn't know about something like that? I'm thinking about buy a, buying a second UPS device so you, you know, I'll get uh, stay connected for at least one hour and when the, whenever the power goes away. But we are lucky. Electricity returns. We can continue without any any problem, right? Because so let me get some illustrations that I have. So you can even though physics is a mathematical type of science, we still use illustrations to better understand the difficult concepts that are being taught, okay? And that's why it's important for us to develop uh, drawing skills, even if they are the most rudimentary one. I, I'm not, I'm not a good, good, good drawer. Okay, I don't, I don't know how to make nice drawings like many people do. I know how to make uh, geometrical drawings that I know how to make, but it's still, even though I don't have those fancy abilities of drawing, and, and we do have a student here, right? That that, that that's drawing. Let me see. Yeah, Jacqueline, right? Jacqueline? You like to draw, right, Jacqueline? Is Jacqueline there? Let's see. Yeah, okay, good. You may, you know, I, 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 I do not know, I haven't seen your work, Jacqueline, but I believe you're, you know, you must be superb, you know, because I, I had a student that, uh, that just showing me her drawing, my, my goodness, uh, I could never achieve anything like that. And most likely what you do is beyond my ability, okay, Jacqueline? But, uh, but what I mean is that you, you don't have to have Jacqueline's ability to, to understand a physics problem. You can draw some very simple geometrical shapes to understand physics concepts. Okay, and I'm going to show you one of them. Okay, so here you go. Keep the drawing simple. The idea of electric charge. Okay, we draw negative electric charges like that, just a little circle, <laughs> okay, with a negative sign. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. I got to share here my screen. Here you go. Here's my PowerPoint presentation, right? Electric charges and forces, and that's how we represent a negative charge. Just a little circle is a negative sign in there. It's my electron, right? Or any other small charge that has a negative value, okay? So minus 10 coulombs, for instance, minus 10 to minus six coulomb, 
whatever. Okay, here is the positive charge. I'm representing this charge by the letter Q. One is Q1, the other one is Q2, okay? Because this one is Q2, Q1, it should go before, right? Positive and negative. Okay, and then we have the neutron, neutral charge that has no charge whatsoever. The neutron, the particle neutron that makes up the nucleus of an, an atom has a zero charge, okay? Going back to your, this one here, no, not this one I want, I want this one. No, not this one, this one here, here you go. Going back, going back to your chemistry, chemistry classes and the constituents of matter, constituents of matter, right? Of matter. We know that matter is made up of molecules and molecules are made up of are made up of atoms and atoms are made up of particles. The particles are the electron, proton, Let's put a plural here, right? Because they're, depending on the atom, you have more than one, protons and neutrons. Protons, protons and neutrons are found in the nuclei of atoms. Electrons, Orbit the nuclei, the nucleus, right? From a very large distance. This is a very good model. This is a very good model of the atom. It's a very good model of the atom. Electrons are negative. Protons are positive and neutrons are neutral particles. Okay. Okay, what do we know about the charge? The charge that I mentioned. The charge that I mentioned above. Huh? They do not have the same mass. They do not have the same mass. Okay. I already told you that we have three charges, right? We have three charges. They do not have the same mass. The heaviest, the heaviest of all is the neutron. Uh, and I'm gonna do it like that. They do not have the same math. They have this heaviest. Okay. The heaviest of all is the neutron. The next one. The next one is the proton. Just as lightly less. Just as lightly less. And the electron is 1,800 times less massive than the other two. It's approximately 1,800 times. Okay. Can you remember that? It's... Uh, it's very useful to remember those, those numbers. And it's not difficult to memorize. 1,800, okay. And three. Electron is 
times less massive than the other two. Most objects are neutrally charged. Most, uh, most objects on the surface of the Earth, okay? On the surface of the Earth are neutrally charged most of the time. Okay? If they become charged, if they become uh, charged, they tend to lose their charge, but here's the surface of the Earth, okay? Lose their charge and become neutral, neutrally charged. That's what we that what we know. But here, don't forget, on the surface of the Earth, I'm not talking about space. Space is a different is a different the different story. We can electrically charge objects in different uh, different objects. One way is just by rubbing one against another one. That's one way. The amount of oh, let, let me put that here. Yeah, the amount of charge in an object is measured in the unit of coulombs, just like I mentioned that there before. Each type of charge is represented by their corresponding particle. Okay, but let's talk, let's see if I have the number of the, okay, here you go, I have the masses of the charges. Okay. Notice that the neutron is just slightly more massive. Those, those, those particles have been measured, the mass of those particles have been measured in the laboratory. And, that, that, and that's a recent discovery, okay? The mass of electron, proton, and neutron, the discovery of the electron, proton, and neutron, this is a recent discovery. Uh, less than 150 years ago. The first one to be discovered was the electron. And it was discovered less than 150 years ago. The next to be discovered was the proton. And the last one to be discovered was the neutron. The more massive was more difficult to discover than the other ones. It has nothing to do, the, you know, the easy, e the difficulty of discovering those particles has nothing to do with their mass, okay? It has nothing to do with their mass. It has more to do with their charge. Because the neutron is a, has a neutral charge, it doesn't uh, feel any electric force whatsoever. But there is one more important piece of information, okay? The, even though the mass of the electron and the proton are different, even though, see that? Even though they are different, their electric charge are the same with the exception of the sign. The magnitude of the charge of the electron is the same as the magnitude of the charge of the proton. That's what we observe in nature. And here, the charge of the electron is represented by the letter E. The charge of the proton is represented by the letter P. Okay, I'm going to put another column here. No, let's see when they were discovered. Discovery, when they were discovered. Right? Discovery of the electron. Mm, let's see if they have it here. Okay, discovery of electrons. During the 1880s and 90s, scientists searched cathode rays for the carrier of electrical properties in matter. You know, there is a device out there, cathode ray tube, CRT, that allowed the discovery of the electron. Those cathode rays tube, we used to use them until recently. We used to use them in... TV sets, in the monitors of TV set. Okay, have you ever seen that big TV set that are very thick in the back? Okay. Nowadays we have flat screens, right? But we, but flat screens is a, is a recent development. 
Back in 1985, I still was using cathode ray tube as a as a screen for my computer. Maybe even all the way up to the 90s and 2000. Okay, and they're very thick. And those were the devices that were invented back then in the 1800s that allowed the discovery of the electron in 1897. So it's less than 150 years. The discovery of the electron discovery, 1897, right? J.J. Thompson, 1897. And now let's take a look at the protons when they were discovered. Discovery of the proton. Maybe I can look here. Everything here, right? I said, okay. Cathode ray tube, cathode ray study began 1854, but took, uh, what, 40 years to discover the electron. Now, what about the proton? Let's see. The proton was like in the 1900s, the early 1900s. Uh, they don't have proton here. Okay, I'll go elsewhere. Discovery of the proton. Okay, here you go, 1932. Uh, electron, okay. JJ Thompson, right? Discoverer. Let's put here, discoverer. Oops. Discoverer, right? Here you go. JJ Thompson. JJ Thompson. Nineteen thirty two, Chadwick. Do you see how recent it was that? Chadwick. And the other one was, uh, wait a minute. Oh boy, no, no. The neutron was 1932. Okay, 1909. 1909. And Rutherford, Ernest Rutherford. Remember those guys? Okay. So now it has been established that matter is made up of, uh, not just of mass. Matter just doesn't have just the property of mass, but it also has this property of electric charge. And And there are three important electric charges that you have to know. There are more, but those, for the sake of this course, those three are enough for you to, to know, which are the electron, proton, and the neutron, okay? Remember that mass and electric charge are two different quantities independent of one another, okay? So much that even though the electron is 18 times lighter than the proton, its charge has the same magnitude as that of the proton. Okay, and remember, how do we memorize that the neutron is heavier than the proton? There's, there's a very easy way of memorizing that. Just remember that the neutron is like uh, one proton combined with an electron. If you combine one proton with an electron, you know, what is what results is a neutral particle, right? So just remember that. You don't have to memorize the numbers, but you have to memorize that neutron is heavier than the proton. And the proton is heavier than the electron. 1800, approximately 1800 times more. Okay, and that's the chronology of discovery. Electron first, proton next, neutron later on. And going back here to my 
FM34, okay, electric forces. Now that you have this idea of uh, electric charges, right? Positive, negative, and neutral. Ideally, it should be negative, positive, and neutral, right? Because that was the order of the discovery. And let's do like that. Let's put Q1 here. I'll change the, num the name of this charge. The next one is going to be Q2. Okay. And the other one is going to be Q3. And how did you manage to discover that, you know, the electron and the proton? Well, we managed to discover them because there is an interaction between them, between the charges. By the same token that masses attract each other, by the same token that masses attract each other, electric charges also may attract one another, provided their charge is not zero, is not neutral, provided. So if you have those two particles nearby each other, the particle on the left is going to feel a force due to the second part particle. And the notation here is the same notation that I used in my physics six. Hopefully your professor also used the same notation there. What F21 means? F21 means? F21 means, you know, I want to write that down here for you. Um, let's see, that's... Mm -hmm. Okay. Force that particle to applies to particle one, okay? The source of the force comes first. This notation here, that's how this notation is used, right? The source, oh. The source of the force comes B comes first. Okay. It is the particle one that is attracting two. It is this force is coming from this particle. Consequently, I put it its number first, right? And we have this other case, right? Force of one applied to two, right? Force of two applied to one, force of one applied. Force that particle one exerts on, right? On particle two. I got a on, you know, it has to be on. For the part two, two applies now, applies on, on, exerts, applies to, yeah, applies is better, yeah. Applies to, let's leave it like two. Here the free body diagram that we learned before, okay? And there is one more thing very important. Because this particle is interacting with this particle. You know, remember Newton's third law of motion. You know, it means that this force is equal in magnitude and opposite to the other one. Remember that? Okay, let's. But then, you know, Particles of different signs attract each other. Particles of same signs repel one another. And Newton's third law of motion applies as well. And that's how, you know, at this very moment, that's, uh, that's when we realize how powerful are, are those three laws of motions of uh, Newton. When Newton formulated 
those laws, he didn't know anything about electrons. It was in the 1700s, just back in the 1700s. Electrons were discovered only 150 years later, at least, right? And yet, his third law applies at the microscopic world, okay? So this third law applies to the microscopic world. That's the nice thing about the successful theory. Okay, I don't need that anymore. Let me close this one. And now I can go to my notes. By the same token, right? What I what did I say here? By the same, uh, since uh, electrons, you know, the charge of the electrons is the same as the charge of the proton, right? The magnitude, the masses are different. But you can also have two particles of almost the same mass and completely different charges. That's what I'm stating here. So now let's talk about the electric force. 1140. 20 more minutes to go. Okay, it's observed that electric charges can produce non-contact forces. Don't forget. A non-contact force that can be either attractive or repulsive. Compare that to the gravitational force. Compare that to the gravitational force. Force that is always attractive, always. And don't forget, there is no negative mass, right? There is no negative mass, although there is a, you know, although we have negative charge, we don't observe object with negative mass, but only positive, but only positive mass. Okay, let's take a look at this video here. Let's see how. That was wrong. Let's keep it. Okay. Okay, so those are simple experiments that we can make in the lab, tinsel and balloon. You're going to see the production of electric charges in an object. They are initially object, those objects are initially uncharged, neutrally charged. Okay, here you go, balloon, mylar balloon, helium balloon, right? I have one of those here at home. And we have those hanging things. So you can see we have a rod here as well. Let's see what they're going to do. What they're going to do. Helium field conducting balloon. Plexiglass rod. I have one of those here. Rubber rod. Rabbit fur. What they're going to do here is something that has been known for quite some time, 2,000 years already. Okay, remember, remember those guys, civilization started in the desert. Civilization started there in Iraq. Civilization started in Egypt, right? The Sumerians were inhabiting that place where Iraq is located right now. The Egyptian, the ancient Egyptian civilization is where they modern state of Egypt is located. So those were the first two civilizations that we have in the world, and they are all located in the, they are all surrounded by deserts, right? And most likely they observed this phenomenon of electric charge, electric, static, right? Static electricity, especially the Bedouins of the desert, we, which we still have today, even in the 21st century, we still have Bedouins of the desert, which are nomad people that walk through the desert and they go practice commerce with everybody, okay? I once had a student who claimed that he, his family were Bedouins of the desert too, and they were very wealthy. Mm -hmm. uh, this student of mine used to live in Syria, and Syria was 
is being ravaged by this war right now. So let's take a look here. Plexiglass rod, the rabbit fur, right? And we are going to rub one against each other. Oh, see what happened? So what happened here? The rod became electrically charged. And, uh, and the T cell also became electrically charged. Okay? And now one has one charge, this other one has another charge. See that? Two different materials, objects, materials, objects made of different materials. When they rub it against the same uh, object, they behave differently, they get different electric, electrical, electrical charges, okay? Now at this very moment, just before, the TCO became electrically charged too because this strip here is moving away from the other ones, right? And the guy touched the TCO so he can discharge that object. Now, what about the balloon? Let's take a look at the balloon. What happened? Oops. He touched the balloon. See that? What is he doing? He's transferring charges from the rod to the balloon. That's what he's doing. And now he's approaching the rod to the balloon and it repels. That's the type of experiment that we used to do thousands of years ago, okay? And that's where we start to get this idea about electric charges. Let's see, what about this one? By different materials. You took as well, Amber. The word electron comes from the Greek word Amber, okay? That's where this the word electron comes from. That's the pronunciation, right? And here is how electron is written in Greek. Static electricity. Now, someone is rubbing something in silk. Oh, rubbing the amber. And Amber is attracting this pieces of paper. I used to perform this experiment in my first grade in Brazil. We would uh, rub my pen in the in the head, okay, and you'd become electrically charged. And don't forget, this type of experiment uh, works best in a dry environment. Okay, so stop it. 10 more minutes to go. And what you have to do now where the math come. Okay, so here you go. Qualitatively, what you have to know. Qualitatively, you have to know the following. Have to know the following. Negative. Object, neg negatively charged object, attract, positively charged, positively charged. Okay, um, opposite charged, uh, okay. Object of same. Charge, repel each other. Okay. That's the qualitative idea that you have to know. But now we're going to talk about the quantitative idea. How do we quantify this force, right? How do we quantify this force? Okay. The force is given by this equation here. This is a law, 
of physics. This is a physics law. We can start adding this law to our table out there. And let's see, four, that's page four, right? Four laws of uh, ENM, right? The first one is Coulomb's law. And now I can decrease from four to three because Coulomb's law is one of the four laws. It's not difficult to memorize this equation. It's very similar to the other one that you're familiar with. Let's see, here you go. First, you know, if you know the charge, one, charge two, and the distance between them, you can find out the force. This value here, this K, is a constant given by this value. 8.99 billion, 8.99 billion, <clears throat> almost 900 billion. No, not, uh, sorry, almost 9 billion. <clears throat> Here's the unit for this constant, okay? If you want to have Newton's from this equation, this constant must have a unit of Newton meter square over Coulomb square. Okay, this Coulomb square is going to cancel out with those two charges. This meter square is going to cancel out with the meter square here. Okay. The further the charges are apart from each other, right? Other the weaker the electrostatic force is. Also, the higher the value of the charge, the larger the force between them, right? And uh, that's uh, electric force. The electric force, well, one, increases with the value of the charges. Let's put the magnitude, right? The mag so there is no, the magnitude of the electric force increases the value of the charge. decreases with the distance. It is attractive when the sign of the charges are different. Right? When the signs of the charges are different, it is repulsive. It is repulsive when the signs of the charge are alike. Okay, K is called the electrostatic constant. Uh, uh, let's say one, two, three. K is the electrostatic constant. You don't have to memorize the value of K. But you can always check the book, you can always check your notes. But if you memorize, it's better, okay? Make your make you work more efficiently. It's nine billion newton meter square per coulomb square. We don't need that anymore. And now we can write down the same equation in terms of vectors. Okay. Here's the magnitude. When you combine, in order for you to know if the force is attractive or repulsive, you have to know if the charges are different or, or alike, right? But uh, if you write according to this formula right here, and by the way, I'm going to, and I'm going to be even more it's better, you know, if we write in terms of the magnitude. Yeah, let's do it this way, okay? The magnitude of the force, okay? The magnitude of the force between two charges. R squared is always gonna be positive, K is positive, 
but those charges may be negative, right? So the magnitude of the force between charges is given by, okay? And whether the force is attractive or repulsive, you can write that down in terms of this vectorial equation, okay? Here you go, look at the vector. Force of one in two, uh, vector position from one to two, okay? That's how you should interpret that, those signs. Uh, let us set the above equation, uh, let's see. F12 means force of one applied to two. And then we're gonna test what I'm telling you. Means force of one applied to two, okay? R12, R12 means unit vector from one to two. Let's see if it's right. Okay, let's apply it and let's see if it works. Two different ways of solving the same problem, finding out whether the Formula is working. Let's see. Let's see if I have it here. Oh, yeah, here you go. I have one here. Okay. I have one here for you. You already know that those forces are repulsive, right? Because we have two positive charges here. Okay. And I want to know the force that one applies to two. Here is the vector position from one to two. And here's the unit vector. Force that one applies on two. You know, Q1 is positive, Q2 is positive. So it's going to be in the positive direction of this vector here. Okay. And you can see this direction here coincides with this direction. So the formula, the vectorial formula works. Works beautifully, right? What about here? Uh, we can do our force of two in one as well, right? Let's let's do the force of two in one. Try to hit go force of two in one. Let's see. I'm going to invert the direction here. Eleven fifty seven is almost there, right? Uh, let's see here. The side form shape. This one here. I'm going to do, 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 do this one. Yeah, good. And this one, yes. That's vector position from two to one. This is unit of vector from two to one. And then I invert the arrow here. This one, invert this one up, okay. I want to find out if that formula that you saw obeys what we already know, right? Force of two in one, right? Is Q1 positive times Q2 positive, okay? Times this unit vector, the force is going to be repulsive, but it's going to be in the same direction as the vector position from two to one, it works. And then you can do that for negative and positive charges as well. Okay? See how many students do we have? Any questions about that? So do we see how simple drawings can help us understand? You know, difficult, sort of difficult phenomenon, right? Here's the notation, force of charge I apply it to charge J. Okay? I'm gonna put it here. Let's see, get, I'm gonna make it better. I'm gonna change J by I, yeah? Now we have it. Oh, why is it doing that? Strange, huh? Yeah, I don't want it to change, keep it this way. Okay, and 11.59, uh, and then we can play with this one as well, right? 
I'm repeating what I did before for charges of different signs. Here's the vector position from one to two, unit vector, and so on. And it works. And then you go from two to one, right to the left. Just, uh, yeah. Okay, that's what we have for today. Any questions? I am going to post those, you know, these notes have there in my in, in Canvas. So you can have it at and when will you know if the class gets canceled? Uh, it looks like we'll find out by the end of this, this week. Okay. They, they gave me, you know, hopefully they will not cancel. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers, right? More money for me. <laughs> okay. So, so if you can, if you know any, anyone, <laughs> yeah, help me out, Norberto. <laughs> help me out. See if you can. Talk to any of your friends or colleagues, right? Classmates, not colleagues, but classmates, and encourage them to join the course. I never had a course of mine at the LA Harbor canceled, never. I've been teaching here for 2000, since 2009, and I never had it canceled. Okay. So I'm going to stop the recording and uh, don't forget I have office hours right now. If you want to stay around, you know, we can chat a little bit more. Ask any questions. Otherwise, we meet again on we meet again on Wednesday, the day after tomorrow. Okay. Thank you very much for you all to come here. Came in here. Thank you, Professor. Welcome.